Off the west coast of Canada, surrounded by the Pacific Ocean, is Vancouver Island, a very special island spanning 460 kilometers in length with a lot of diversity ranging from cities to mountains to rugged coastlines and ancient rainforests. Within the traditional territories of the Pichidat First Nation is the Juan de Fuca Trail. The trail is 47 kilometers in length and follows the abundant southwest coast. It weaves through old growth forests with unimaginably large trees, drops down onto various beaches with kelp forests, tide pools, sea mammals, and so much more. It takes you up and down, up and down for 47 uniquely magical kilometers. My name's Krista. I grew up on this island and I've never hiked the entire Juan de Fuca Trail. Together with my husband Brian, we set out to hike the trail over the next three days and I'm going to share our hike with you over the next 20 minutes or so. I will also show you what gear I had with me a little bit later. Okay, let's get hiking. table. We should take a picture of this one too. We needed cash with us to register for our two nights of camping at the trailhead. It was $10 per person per night. The envelope gets dropped into the red receptacle and then we hit the trail. We both hadn't been backpacking for a few months so we were taking it easy and letting our bodies warm up to it. I can't even explain how good it feels to be out here. The sounds, the smells, the colors, the feeling of being in the forest, it's just, it feels amazing. First water break, we made it to the first beach, and we're just making sure our in reach is all syncing up because Brian's using it to navigate primarily. And just taking in this incredible view. What a place! These are western red cedar trees and they can get massive. Like this one's not even the biggest one we've gone by today. I love them. No expansion. <laughs> <laughs> they look tasty though. They look tasty, no expansion. <laughs> I bet they're delicious. Mm. It's still good. It's not yeah. as good as when they're fluffy, Yeah. but they're good. Yeah. We've reached our first ladders of the hike. So the Juan de Fuca Trail and the West Coast Trail have these ladders to help you go up and down really steep bluff sections because often we're going down to the beach back up and so these ladders are like they look really new ready ready so i'm gonna go down backwards it's way safer <laughs> At this point, we had hiked nine kilometers and made it to Bear Beach. We 
we decided to stop here for a little lunch break. See how these look. Okay, that was pretty good. There was TP and hand sanitizer in there. We each carried two liters of water with us because we knew we could fill up at streams along the route. We used our Sawyer Squeeze water filter to clean our water before drinking. Here we go! We've got about three kilometers remaining today. We're both feeling a little bit tired at this point because it's our first backpacking trip in a while, but we're also both feeling quite good. We are at our camp spot for the night. The campsite is full, so we are at the overflow camp spot up on the bluff. It's windy up here, but it has a stunning view, so we are happy with it. We are setting up our new tent by Durston Gear. This is my first time ever setting it up. It's so awesome. Many of you have been asking about the process for rehydrating my homemade dehydrated hiking meals. The first step is to pour the dehydrated meal into our pot and add water. I added just enough to cover all the pieces of food. Then we bring it to a boil over our camp stove. We then turn the stove off and let the pot sit covered for 10 minutes. Waiting for 10 minutes is the hardest part. Then we check the consistency and add more water if we think it's needed. And for this meal, I added rice noodles at this step because it's a Thai red curry. Then we bring everything to a boil again for a couple minutes and it's ready to eat. It was so delicious and tasted amazing after such a long day of hiking. <laughs> that was good. We slept for a very long time to the sound of the waves. When I emerged from the tent, I heard a whale breath, looked out and saw it come up again for air right here. It looks like a gray or humpback whale, but it was such a short glimpse that I'm really not sure. I saw it for only one more breath before it was out of sight. I was also watching closely around the kelp forests. You can see one here because I know sea otters like to eat sea urchins and other invertebrates which graze on giant kelp. Our camp neighbors saw an otter, but we didn't see one here. For reference, this is what a dead kelp looks like washed up on the beach. It was finally time to break camp and hit the trail. Okay, at this point you might be wondering what I'm carrying in my pack, so here's all the gear I had with me. For my hiking outfit, I was wearing Ultra Trail Runners for hiking shoes and ankle height Smartwool socks. My hat is the Alaho Catbark Terex. I have a Smartwool sports bra and Patagonia underwear, a button-down hiking shirt from Mountain Equipment Co-op, and Gorp hiking shorts from Mountain Equipment Co-op. For camp clothing and additional layers, I had wool base layers for sleeping by Smartwool, 
a toque, wool socks for sleeping, down pants for sleeping, light gloves, synthetic down jacket by Arcteryx, rain jacket by Arcteryx, rain pants by Mountain Equipment Co-op, camp sandals, they are the lightweight Birkenstock ones, and gaiters by Rab, which I didn't end up liking to wear so I didn't use them really. For tech and safety, I had a headlamp, bear spray, bug spray, sunglasses, a Ziploc wallet with some cash so I could pay for camping, my Kindle e-reader, a battery bank with cords to charge my iPhone and headlamp, an in-reach mini satellite communication device with SOS capabilities. And that was carried by Brian. And a first aid kit also carried by Brian. For my toiletries, I had a trowel to dig a hole for going number two, but I never needed it because there were outhouses at every campsite. A pea cloth by Kula, sunscreen, toothbrush, dental floss, leukotape, TP and hand sanitizer, toothpaste, chapstick, daytime with SPF and nighttime. For food, water, and cooking, I carried a bear canister to hold all of our food. This isn't necessary for this trail, but I wanted to start using it in preparation for future hiking goals, and I liked it. I had two smart water bottles of one liter each, Sawyer squeeze water filter with the cleaning supplies, an open all knife, a stove by MSR, the pocket rocket deluxe that Brian carried, fuel that Brian carried, pot and sporks that Brian carried. And for our sleep system and shelter, I had my inflatable pillow, my Thermarest sleeping pad, my mountain hardware sleeping bag, which is good to minus seven Celsius. And our tent is by Durston Gear. It's the X Mid 2 and I love it. And my backpack is also by Durston Gear. It is the 55 liter Kakwa pack. Okay, that's all the gear, back to the hike. We walked down to check out the tide pools and look at this seal pop up for a breath. I didn't even notice this at the time. Here's a tide pool and some mussels growing here, another beautiful tide pool, and then a big cluster of mussels growing. After a quick water fill up, we hit the trail again. Our goal was to make it from Chin Beach to Little Coochie Creek Camp. From Chin to Sombrio Beach is the most challenging part of the trail according to the park trail map. I think it's because there are the most elevation changes. It just felt like we were going up and down, up and down, over and over again. But it allowed for some amazing views, so we were loving it. After a couple K on the beach, we're already back into the forest. So we're climbing up probably to avoid an impassable beach. This is amazing. Wow. Okay, I'm gonna take it. Got it. At Sombrio Beach, we saw an elephant seal laying on the beach and later learned that it is in the process of molting. These seals will lay on the beach for one month out of the year to molt all of their fur along with the underlying layer of skin. 
Humans and pets should keep our distance so that we don't disturb the seals and because they could be carrying diseases. After a little more beach walking, we followed the iconic buoys that mark where the trail heads back inland for our final push of the day through the forest. <laughs> Hello. At Little Coochie Creek Camp, there were lots of new looking tent platforms and we set up beside a trail friend we made. Hiking along the Juan de Fuca can be quite social if you want it to be. We made our beds and then followed a little trail down to the beach. day two and we are at our second camp spot tonight. The camp is up here in the forest but we walked down a little trail so we could cook dinner on the beach and brush our teeth down here and it's absolutely amazing. It's misting with a little sprinkle of rain but it's not too wet. It just overall just feels misty and moody and really special. It feels amazing to be out hiking and being so present with nature. I've spent a lot of time indoors lately. Uh, a lot of my training has been on my walking pad. So it's just such a different feeling to be out here in the back country and just experiencing it here. It's incredible. Wow. Wow, that looks good. <laughs> Is it close? It's ready. Time for dinner. It's chilly tonight. Homemade. It's not that cold outside. <laughs> <laughs> Delicious. So the rehydrated beans taste normal. The corn and the carrots taste just like a little bit harder than normal, I would say. But otherwise, it's pretty much the exact same as if I ate it before, which we did, ate it before dehydrating. Great, I'm in. It's such a simple meal, but I still love it every yeah. single time. We just finished dinner, so we're gonna head back to camp now. Bye, beach. It's our last morning here on the Juan de Fuca Trail and we had another slow morning. It was raining all morning. So we decided to just stay cozy in the tent and wait it out a bit. It seems to not be raining as much, so that worked out. I'm feeling pretty good. I'm feeling tired though. I forgot, yeah, I kind of did forget that part of getting used to backpacking is the whole experience, like um, sleeping in the tent, eating different food, um, everything like my body's like okay I am not used to this right now so I'm just uh, so glad that we're doing these hikes now and um, getting my body used to being on trail again it feels amazing tough but amazing packing up a few more items in here Brian you've got an item oh yeah you've got two items in here We had 14 kilometers left to reach the northwest trailhead, marking the end of the trail. This part of the trail is marked as the easier of the sections, so we expected to make good time. There were a few spots that dropped down onto the beach today, but we were mostly walking inland through absolutely incredible forests. It's hard to explain just how amazing they were, so I'll try to immerse you in the experience now. Come on in.
This is a huckleberry bush. Come close. This is salal. It gets salal berries. This is lady fern. So delicate and beautiful. Look at all this moss here. Here, you can see signs of an old forest fire. Long, long ago, the center of that tree is burnt. Wow. This is skunk cabbage and it gets these beautiful yellow flowers and it smells kind of skunky and you know that there's mud around when you see skunk cabbage. There's Brian in the mud. <laughs> it's opening up to the ocean. Here's the coast. These are cedars. And here we are reaching Botanical Beach. We had one kilometer left on this wide gravel path to complete the Juan de Fuca Trail and get picked up by our ride. 1K to go. We're feeling tired. Our hearts are full from that incredible landscape. And we're hungry. We're ready for some nice tasty food. That was such a beautiful experience. Thank you to all those who have made this trail possible and an extra big thank you to the Pachidat First Nations people for their stewardship of this land for time immemorial. If you would like to see more of my hiking videos, please consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you so much for watching.